What's up, you guys? Welcome back. Real Talk Vapors. Uh, good to see you. Good to have you. How are you? You're good? I'm well. That's awesome. So today, we're going to do a little tank review. Also, this is kind of going to be a dual purpose video. So not only is it a tank review, and today we're going to be looking at the Vaporesso NRG tank. You can see these. Uh, they come with the new Vaporesso Revenger kit. Uh, pretty awesome tank. I think it's a great substitute for the Baby Beast. Um, <clears throat> the coils are the same type of style, so you can actually use Baby Beast coils in here or anything with similar thread. Uh, but these work really, really well. I think the flavor on them is a little bit better. They don't pack the cotton in quite as tight as those Baby Beast coils. They're made with a little bit more care, a little bit 10 or 11 care. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Um, I'm going to break it down and show you guys everything about it. Uh, also, this is going to be an instructional video on for new vapors on how to set up a new tank for your new vape. So we'll take a look at all that. We're going to break it down and talk about it and put some juice up in there and vape it. Let's get started. Okay, so here is the tank, the Vaporesso NRG tank. Um, the box is pretty cool, nice little slick packaging by Vaporesso. I like them. They don't come out with mod after mod. They take their time on developing something and it ends up being a good product. So there's a couple cool things about this. It's got the slide and fill design. So to fill it up on the top, there's a little arrow over here, if you can see that. And it just slides open like that. Just real nice, clicks into place, clicks back into place. It's got a great fill port right there, good size, so you can get your unicorn bottle or your glass dripper bottle. Not, we're not fans of those glass dripper bottles, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Right? Right. So to take it apart, what we're gonna do is unscrew it from the bottom. Typically I'd turn it upside down and just kind of spin it like that. We're gonna turn it counterclockwise to unscrew it. And when you get a new tank, you wanna make sure you're priming your coil before you start filling it up and just going to town on it. If you don't take the time to prime the coil properly, you're gonna get a bad burnt hit and it's not gonna be fun and that's not a great way to get started as a new vapor. So there's your coil. This is the uh, G8 core I believe that's in there. We're actually gonna put a different one on there. I'm gonna run the uh, the G6, I believe it's called GT6 maybe. Uh, the wattage range on that one is 40 to 100. It is a 0.2 ohm coil. Uh, the best range is going to be between 70 to 90, so about 80 watts. It's going to be about perfect for that. So the tank also comes with, in the box, you got an extra glass, your replacement glass, and there's a plethora of O-rings on the inside. There's a protection ring to put around the glass as well, uh, as well as a 510 drip tip adapter. So most of the tanks that are coming out now have this big wide caps on there, those big wide drip tips, and those are going to be an 810 style drip tip. So if you hear people saying that, that's what that means. You know, for your TFE 8, some drippers usually have those. All right, so we're going to take our coil here, GT6, and we are going to pop that in. So what we're going to do is see the bottom here, how there's that little nice little loop on the bottom. That's what's going to make contact with your 510 pin in the bottom of the base. So the coil is going to go connection side down, and we're going to screw it in. And you don't have to tighten this thing down. Sometimes if you go too tight, that's actually a bad thing. You can move the O-rings and the bend and they can leak juice all over your hands and that's not fun. We don't want that. So just until it stops spinning, so it's a little snug but not overly tight, so we can get that back out later when we have to change it. So we got this sitting here. It's looking real good. So we're gonna go ahead and prime this coil up. Uh, I'm hitting some Vaptasia Rainbow Road today. It tastes like Fruit Loops, it's delicious. Um, I've been hitting some dessert flavors this week, probably because it's cold out. It tends to happen. When it's cold, I go desserty. When it's hot, I go fruity. Um, so that's good. We're going to go ahead and juice this up. So we need to prime the coil to make sure the cotton is nice and saturated before we start vaping it. So you can see anything with that white cotton in there, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to get that nice and juiced up. Uh, we don't want to fill the coil up. That's not the goal. You don't want to fill the coil up because that's going to cause it to leak through the bottom, through the airflow. Um, so really what I'm going to do, you can see here, so I'm just going to hit any part that I see white. I'm just doing a little bit of juice at a time. And I will kind of stick the, the tip of the bottle in there, but I'll keep it on its side. So this way the sidewalls drink it up and I'll kind of wait a second for the cotton to absorb that juice. Turn to the side and we'll hit this one too. Kind of spin it like that, but this way it's not going straight down to the bottom. It's allowing that cotton to become fully saturated with juice. So I'm just gonna finish up doing this here. Notice how I'm kind of pulsing the bottle with my thumb there. I'm not trying to dump a whole mess of juice in there. 
I'm really just hitting those spots where I see cotton. Now also you can see on the side, there's little holes there for the cotton uh, to peek through so that way it can wick properly. So I'm gonna hit that. Uh, if you're priming it correctly, you should notice that those are already starting to get wet, get a little more saturated. So I'm just giving it the extra, the extra mile here by hitting the side and making sure it's all juiced up proper. So once your coil is primed, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the tank. So you just go ahead and screw that back on there. And again, don't need to over tighten it. Once it stops spinning, it's good. We're good. Just needs to make contact, just needs to seal. And those O-rings will make sure it seals so don't feel like, oh, I didn't ratchet it down so it's gonna leak out. It's not gonna leak out. Once it stops spinning, let go. So now we can move the top open here, just sliding it like so. And we're gonna fill it up through that kidney shaped hole on the top. I am gonna leave a tiny gap at the top just for pressure purposes so it doesn't start to wanna leak out. So we're gonna close that and we're gonna let it sit for just a minute uh, and prime a little bit further. You, you typically wanna let your coil, once you fill your tank up, sit and soak for about five minutes, maybe 10. Some people say more, some people say less. Also what happens is you can uh, close your airflow off, kind of put your fingers around and tug on it a couple times. So that's gonna help pull the juice from the tank through the cotton towards the heat source, which is really gonna help. All right, so another great um, technique. This takes a little bit longer. So if you got some time, if you prime your coil ahead of time, this would be the best idea for you. So you go buy a new coil just to have for when you need to change it. And you're sitting there, you wake up or something, and you take a hit, and you're like, ah, I'm probably gonna have to change this coil today, or it's been about a week and you know you're gonna have to change that coil. This is the best rule of thumb. So the coils come in these nice little foiled packages, right? Nice little tray there, right? So this is the best method we've found for priming coils to get them to last the longest and make sure you have a good clean hit the first time you hit it. So they come in these nice little trays. What you do is you take your juice, you poke it through the foil, and you fill this up entirely with your juice. You set it down and you forget about it. Walk away for about an hour. Let it soak for at least one hour. When you come back, it will have had time to completely saturate. Every, in every single inch of that cotton will have soaked up some juice, and you'll notice the juice went from being full to down on the bottom. That's because that coil was thirsty, and it drank it all out. When I see that happen, when people prime their coils like that and give it time, they typically last about three to four weeks. So that's a lot longer. Most people with those baby beast coils are getting like three days at best, honestly. Within a week, they're back to get a new coil. And I hate that. I hate that so many people have to keep getting new coils. So again, that's why I really like this tank in particular. I think they did a great job with how they made the coils. They're very well made. <clears throat> haven't seen any connection issues with them yet. I haven't gotten a dud, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, especially with these ones, soaking that up, letting it drink all that juice up into the cotton really goes the extra mile in helping it last longer and having better flavor. All right, so I think this is about ready. You can see there's some bubbles coming up here. That is a great sign. When you got the bubbles coming up, that means it's actually feeding the juice the way that it should. So this coil says right on the back of it, likes to run 70 to 90. So I'm actually gonna run it uh, at the lowest point. The, the wide range for the coil is 40 to 100. We're gonna turn it down to about 45. We're gonna start at 45. So what I tell people for the first like five to 10 hits, running on that low wattage, take a short, quick hit, just like this. Almost no production, almost couldn't see any vapor. Short, quick hits, just like that. And what that does is the heat, little bits of heat at a time, actually pull the juice closer to the heat source, gravity fed, because science and Bill Nye the science guy, that's why. So yeah, we'll do that for a couple more hits here. Flavor's already great on it. So now I'm actually gonna bump up to 50, we're gonna go to 55. Give it a second to cool down. We're still getting those bubbles feeding through. That is a great sign. Getting more vapor production. Can you see that? So that's good. It's already hitting really, really well, guys. This coil is almost fully primed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bump it right up to 70. We're gonna start at the lower end of the recommended wattage range. That's great. Right off the bat, I noticed the flavor is kicking it. I'm gonna let it sit and soak for a little bit and we'll revisit it just in a minute here. 
All right, so I'll let it prime up a little bit more. Now I'm at 80 watts, and that's right dead center of the recommended wattage range. That's typically the best way to go. Just take that 70 to 90, cut it in half. Middleman is 80 watts, so we're hitting it at 80. Let's see how the flavor is. So good. I really only let that sit for about five minutes or so, um, and it's wicking well. I can see the bubbles. They're keeping, they're keeping on, keeping on. It's juiced. It's hitting wonderfully. Um, that's really all there is to it, guys. I mean, you can run that for about a week, two weeks now. Um, if you let it soak and prime the way I was showing you, um, you could get probably three, four weeks out of it. You know, just uh, take your time. Be patient with it. Don't rush into it. I know you want to get to vaping, but uh, I'd rather have something that's going to last that you will enjoy. So that's it, man. This, this Vaporesso uh, NRG tank is awesome. I highly recommend you check it out. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like the video. Share it to your friends who need to know how to prime a coil properly. Uh, and make sure you stay tuned for more. We got a lot of fun stuff planned coming up in the near future here. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next time. So there's a really long thread on there.